Good morning. Thank you so much for celebrating Easter this morning with us. We are Rocky Mountain Presbyterian Church in Westminster, Colorado. We exist to glorify God by making disciples who love Christ, his church, and all people. My name is Chris Weniger. I'm the director of operations here. We have just three links that I want to point out as we begin worship this morning. All three are right below this video. The first is a link to our bulletin. And you can open that to follow along with our worship service. It'll have all the lyrics to the songs that we sing, our liturgy, uh, as well as the sermon text and an outline. But we'll also have our liturgy and song lyrics in the video, so you don't need to use the bulletin if you'd prefer not to. The second link is for our online giving. So you can go ahead and click on that whenever you'd like, if you'd like to give online. And third uh, is a link to our prayer requests or requesting more information about us as a church. So if you have any prayer requests you'd like to share with us, we have a group of prayer warriors here that would love to pray for you and any needs you have. Or if you're uh, learning about Rocky Mountain Presbyterian Church, if you've just found us online and you want to learn more, go ahead and send us a message because we would love to get in touch with you as well. Well, during this pandemic, it's easy for us to feel overwhelmed by fear, and by the death and suffering that we see around us. But this Easter morning, we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the guarantee of our hope of eternal life. And because of this, instead of worry, we can have confidence. Instead of fear, we can have hope. And instead of being in darkness, we are in the light. We need these promises of Easter now more than ever. So let's begin by fixing our eyes on our God who makes these promises and is faithful to keep them. Please read with me our call to worship. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. My glory will sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Let's sing together. your 
trusting Oh, hell, where is your victory? Oh, church, come stand in the light The glory of God has defeated the night We're singing Oh, death, where is your sting? Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. It's when death was arrested and our lives began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made us new. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free, forever. And our lives began Oh, we 
We just sang a song that started with the words, alone in our sorrow and dead in our sin, lost without hope and no place to begin. You may be feeling that way this morning. The social distancing and quarantine may make you feel alone in sorrow. And the devastation of this virus may make you feel lost and without hope. And you may realize that this is also true of our souls. We are lost, alone, and dead in our sin. But today we celebrate the most amazing message of hope. That Christ Jesus died and was raised from the dead to save us. And when we confess our sins to Jesus and follow him as our God and Savior, we are brought into God's family. We are saved from our sin, and we have the assurance of eternal life in glory. Maybe you've never confessed your sins before, but now you realize that you need the life Christ offers. If that's the case for you, we would love to hear from you. So please send us a message through the link below this video. We would love to hear from you and get in touch with you so that we can talk with you about what it means and what it looks like to walk with Jesus. If you've already placed your faith in him, then let's confess our sins together and remember the life that is ours in Christ because of his death and resurrection. Please read with me our confession of sin. God of grace, you love us and promise us life but we have turned away from you by trying to live on our own terms. We sin against you and against others. So instead of life, we have death. Give us new hearts so that we die to sin and have the life that you promise in Christ through the power of his resurrection. Amen. Let's take a moment to confess our sins silently. Lift up your heads, you who have been baptized into Christ's death to walk in newness of life and hear these words of grace. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Christ died for your sins and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then know that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> The Lord is risen today. Ah, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, Ah, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Ah, hallelujah. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Ah, again our glorious King, ah, hallelujah, where, O oh, death, is now thy sting, ah, hallelujah, once he died our souls to save, ah, hallelujah, where's thy victory? Now we're crying. 
Christ has led. Ah, hallelujah. Following our exalted head. Ah, hallelujah. Made like him, like him we rise. Ah, hallelujah. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Hail the Lord of earth and heaven, alleluia. Praise to thee by both be given, alleluia. We, 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 triumphant now, alleluia. Hail the resurrection Normally, this would be the time in our service when we would collect tithes and offerings. Again, we have that link below this video, and you can just go ahead and click on that if you'd like to give online. And when you do, you can also specify if you would like to give to our general fund, to our missions partners, or to our deacons fund, which goes towards helping those in our church and in our community. And again, uh, this is also the time uh, when we would collect any prayer requests or welcome cards. So if you'd like to send us a note, send us some prayer requests or anything uh, that you would like to, us to know or pray for, go ahead and click on that link below. Uh, another option for you is that you can also mail your checks to the church if you would prefer to do that. Please pray with me for our offering. Father, you are the king of all creation. Everything that exists belongs to you and is at your disposal to give and take away. And everything you give to us, you give, so that we can be faithful stewards. Help us as individuals and as a church to be faithful in how we use all that you've given us. And help us not to set our hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on you, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. If you're just checking us out for Easter, my name is Shane. I'm the pastor at RMPC. We've been going through the Gospel of Luke, but today we're taking a break. In celebration of Easter, we're going to study 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 through 23. 1 Corinthians was written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. And chapter 15 is one of the greatest chapters on the resurrection in the entire Bible. Let's ask God to help us understand it. Father in heaven, you are God and there is no other. You are God and there is none like you. As we turn to the scriptures, we pray that you would help us to see you. Help us to see your glory and your goodness. And help us to see the truth. Encourage us with the gospel so that your son would be the center of our lives. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. In the fall of 1993, a special ops team was sent into Mogadishu, Somalia, to arrest two top lieutenants of a warlord who controlled the city. The operation was supposed to take 30 to 45 minutes but the special ops team began taking heavy fire from the Somali militia, as well as armed civilians. Then the militia shot down two U.S. helicopters. A team was sent in to secure both crash sites, but then those soldiers got pinned down. And an operation that was supposed to take 30 minutes ended up turning into a battle that lasted over 15 hours and went on throughout the night. At one point, a soldier named Phil Lepre said a prayer, looked at a picture of his daughter, and said, baby, 
I hope you have a wonderful life. The team at one of the helicopter crash sites was overrun by a mob and killed. The team at the other crash site was pinned down and unable to get away. But they did hold out until morning when a rescue operation was launched. A force armed with tanks and air support entered the city and rescued the men. By the time it was over, there were 18 U.S. casualties and hundreds of Somali casualties. Like those soldiers, we are under siege by the enemy. But our enemy is death. We live in a fallen world where we are assaulted with suffering and loss of life. The most recent manifestation is COVID-19, which has brought the entire world to its knees. Projections indicate that there will be between 100,000 to 200,000 U.S. casualties by August. Death has us pinned down and under siege, but we still have reason to hope. Just like in Somalia, our commanding officer is sending in a rescue operation. But his focus is not just COVID-19. He's conducting an operation that will defeat death for all time. The Apostle Paul tells us about it in 1 Corinthians 15. Please follow along as I read. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. That is God's word. This passage is about the greatest rescue operation in the history of the world. It teaches that Christ is our captain who defeats death. He's going to come in with his tanks and his air support, and his victory will be certain. Our job is to hold off the enemy until he arrives. The fact that Christ is our captain should enable us to do that. When you're in a war, the decisions your captain makes can be the difference between life and death. Our situation is similar to what happened to Easy Company during World War II. It's chronicled in the miniseries Band of Brothers. In one scene, Easy Company is making an assault on the town of Foy, which is occupied by the German army. Now, at this point in the war, Easy Company has a captain who is completely incompetent. And he makes a decision that results in the death of a lot of men under his command. Easy Company gets separated, they stop advancing, and they get caught in no man's land. They are like sheep without a shepherd. They were facing enemy fire and being hammered by artillery. Men are dying left and right. The major, who was over the entire battalion, is standing off from the battle, watching all of this unfold. He tells his best captain to get in there and replace the incompetent guy who's leading his men to slaughter. So the best captain in the battalion grabs his weapon and runs toward the battle. He runs right through enemy fire and connects with easy company. The first thing he does is relieve the other captain of his command. Then he regroups the men and gives them a new strategy. They continue their assault, and he leads them to victory. On that day, he became the new captain of Easy Company, and he remained their captain for the rest of the war. 
the whole point of the Bible passage that I just read is that we have a new captain and he will lead us to victory. Our first captain was Adam, the first person that God ever created. God created humanity to live in perfect relationship with him forever. There was no sin, no suffering, no death. Just humanity living in a perfect relationship with God and flourishing under his gracious rule. That's how God designed things. But Adam was an incompetent captain, and he made a decision that resulted in the death of every person under his command. There was only one thing that God told Adam not to do. Only one. He told Adam not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam disobeyed that command, and as a result, he died. Not right away. He actually lived a, a long life. But Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. Death is the punishment that we earn for our sin. So instead of living forever, Adam eventually died, which was never part of God's original design. But it gets worse. Adam wasn't the only one who died. His actions introduced sin and death into all of humanity. You see, when you're a captain, your actions affect the lives of everyone under your command. So when Adam sinned, all of humanity fell from our state of perfection. Since all human beings are descendants from Adam, we all inherit a sinful nature. And we all die. That's what this passage means when it says that in Adam, all die. Our first captain led us to slaughter. Now, God the Father is up in heaven watching all of this unfold. And he tells his best captain, his only begotten son, to get in there and relieve Adam of his command. The Father sent Jesus into the world to undo everything Adam did. Instead of sinning against God, Jesus lived a perfect life. He's the only person to ever do that. Then he died in our place. You remember me saying that the wages of sin is death? On the cross, Jesus paid the punishment we owe for our sin. And three days later, he defeated death. By rising from the grave. Now, earlier I said that when you're a captain, your actions affect the lives of everyone under your command. If you're under Christ's command, his perfect life gets credited to your account. He actually earns the way to heaven for you. His death also pays the debt you owe. And his resurrection defeats death for you. One day, we will rise from the dead, just as he did. That's what verse 22 means when it says that in Christ, all shall be made alive. His resurrection causes ours. The text calls Christ's resurrection the first fruits. A more modern analogy would be that his resurrection is like the first in a series of dominoes. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we will as well. Verse, 20 set, verse 23 says that this will occur at his coming. That's referring to Christ's second coming. One day, Jesus will return. And when he does, the dead will rise from the grave. And our bodies will actually be renewed. They will be reunited with our souls and we will never suffer disease or death ever again. We will spend eternity living in a renewed world 
enjoying a perfect relationship with God and flourishing forever under his gracious rule. Just like he designed in the beginning. So just as our first captain led us to slaughter, our new captain leads us to victory and eternal life. Now the question we have to ask is, how can we get under Christ's command? At first, you may think it's automatic. Verse 22 says, For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Because of Adam, every person dies. So it sounds like because of Jesus, every person will rise from the dead and have eternal life. But that can't be what it means because in chapter 6 of this same book, it clearly states that some people have eternal life and some people do not. So what does it mean that in Adam all die and in Christ all will be made alive? The word all refers to all people who are under that captain's command. All who are under Adam's command die. But all who are under Christ's command will live. To be under Adam's command, all you have to do is be born. We are all born under Adam. That's why everybody dies. But to be under Christ's command, you have to place your faith in him. You have to say, I will make Jesus Christ the captain of my soul. I will give my life to him. I will trust in him and follow him wherever he leads. Only those who choose to place themselves under Christ's command will have eternal life. Verse 23 makes this very clear when it says, those who belong to Christ will be raised. If Jesus is not your captain, if you have not trusted in him, I encourage you to click on the link for prayer requests and learning more. Give us your contact information. And I would love to get in touch with you and answer any questions you may have about trusting in Christ. If Jesus is already your captain, if you've already trusted in him and, and placed yourself under his command, what does it look like for you to have faith in him and follow his lead during a pandemic? What does faith in your captain look like when you fear sickness for yourself and your loved ones? When you feel isolated and alone? When you've been laid off or your business is struggling? I read a story about a private in the army who was learning to drive a tank. He thought it would be easy because he grew up on a farm, and so he had a lot of experience driving heavy equipment. But 30 seconds into his first drive, his drill sergeant is yelling, I said left, hard left. But he only had three small periscopes to see through, so he couldn't tell if a hard left turn would be safe. And all of his years of driving heavy equipment had taught him that you do not move unless you can clearly see that it's going to be safe. So he tells his drill sergeant, I can't see what's on the left. The drill sergeant replied, I didn't command you to see what's on the left. I told you to turn left. In a slightly defiant and arrogant tone, the young private said, fine. He turned the control as hard left as it would go and pushed the gas to the floor. He just knew he was going to kill somebody or smash into something, and this drill sergeant would be to blame. The drill sergeant continued barking directions, which the private continued to follow. When the exercise was over, the private climbed out of the tank, expecting to see 
carnage and, and wreckage everywhere. But to his surprise, nothing was harmed. In fact, everyone was admiring the fine driving that this young private was doing. What does it look like to trust in your commanding officer during this pandemic? It means trusting in him to lead you, even if you can't see where you are going. In a war, the commanding officer always has a battle plan in place. And each soldier has a part to play in that plan. But not every soldier gets to be in the general's tent. They can't look at the battle plan and see the lines on the map and know how their part fits into the overall whole. So they simply have to trust that the officers above them know what they're doing, that they have a good plan in place. We can't see the battle plan of our commanding officer. But we must trust in him all the same. Our captain is a superior military strategist. And he has the perfect plan in place to defeat the enemy. We have a vital role to play in that plan. But we can't understand how our individual role plays into the larger whole. It's beyond us. So we have to trust in his wisdom. During this pandemic, it may look like we're losing the battle against death. And that makes no sense, especially if Christ is already risen. But I do know this. It is impossible to win a war without your soldiers engaging the enemy. And that always brings fear and suffering and death. But our engagement with the enemy and the suffering we endure during the battle will somehow lead to our ultimate victory. Only our captain knows how. And we have to trust in his strategy because one day, we will stand by his side in victory. And everything we're experiencing now will somehow work toward that ultimate end. The reason we know he will be victorious is because of Christ's resurrection. Jesus came and stared death right in the face. And death blinked. He rose from the grave victoriously, and now he extends that same resurrection power to you. At the end of your story, you will overcome. In this life, we will suffer losses. But because of the resurrection, there are no defeats. There are losses but no defeats, only victory. You may suffer the loss of your health, the loss of your job, the loss of relational connection. Some of these losses will be very temporary, while others will last longer. But on the day of your resurrection, these losses will all be viewed as minor setbacks on your path to victory. One of the losses we all feel right now is the loss of corporate worship. It is very sad for me to be preaching to you through a screen on Easter Sunday. It doesn't feel very victorious. It feels like the enemy reigns. But I know that on the day of our resurrection, when we fall on our faces at the feet of our glorified captain and worship him together with white 
hot passion. This Easter will be the furthest thing from our minds. It will be a minor road bump on our path to glory. When Christ is your captain, there will be losses, but no defeats, only victory. I can say this to you confidently because Christ has already risen from the dead. Because of the resurrection, death already lies on the battlefield defeated. He's still breathing his final breaths. But the boot of our captain is on his chest. And the last thing death will see is the face of Christ saying, Where, O death, is your victory? In September 2006, Army First Lieutenant Todd Weaver was killed by a bomb on his second tour of duty in Afghanistan. He left behind a wife named Emma and a baby girl named Kylie. Todd was a man of faith, and he and his wife raised their daughter in the faith. Soon after he died, his wife Emma found two letters on his computer one that Todd had written to her, and one that he had written to their little girl, Kylie. And it was clear that he intended these letters to be read in the event of his death. Emma took the letter to their daughter, Kylie, and had it superimposed on a picture of Todd and Kylie together. I'd like to read part of that letter to you. Todd writes to his daughter, Dear Kylie, my sweetie, although you may not remember me, I want you to know how very much your daddy loves you. I left for Afghanistan when you were nine months old. Leaving you was the hardest thing I have ever done. You are so very special to me. You are truly a gift from God. The best day of my life was the day you were born. Every time I saw you, your smile would melt my heart. I am so sorry I will not be able to see you grow up. But remember, your daddy is not gone. I am in heaven now smiling down on you every day. Always remember to say your prayers at night and to be thankful for your many blessings. When things are not going your way, never forget that God knows what is best for you and everything will work out in the end. With very much love, your daddy. Things will work out in the end for Kylie. As comforting as it is that her daddy is smiling down on her from heaven, Kylie has something even better to look forward to. Though she only sees her daddy in pictures, one day she will see him in the flesh. She will be able to look right into his eyes and see his love for her. She'll be able to feel his strong arms wrapped around her when he gives her a hug. And together, they can kneel down at the throne of Christ and praise their victorious Savior. In life, there will be losses, but no defeats. Only victory. That is the hope of the resurrection. It is a hope that we share. 
the hope of Jesus Christ's victory over death. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are glorious and mighty in power. We praise you for this perfect combination of strength and love, of might and compassion. Lord, we pray that when we are discouraged, when we feel alone, when the odds against us seem insurmountable, that your spirit would remind us of your resurrection and the victory that we will share with you when you return. Give us an eternal perspective and help us to live every day in light of that great day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You are always fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around My delight is found in knowing That you wear the victor's crown You're my help and my defender You're my savior and my friend By your grace I live and breathe to worship you At the mansion of your greatness In your name I will bow down in your presence fear is silence For you wear the victor's crown Let your glory fill this temple Let the power overflow By your grace I live and breathe to worship you Hallelujah You have all As the lost become the found, you can never be defeated, for you wear the victor's crown. You are Jesus the Messiah, you're the hope of all the world, by your grace I live and breathe to worship you. Hallelujah. come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear At the cross your work was finished You were buried in the ground But the grave could not contain you For you wear the victor's crown Hallelujah Jesus, 
pray with me. Father in heaven, because of Christ's saving work and because of his resurrection, we come to you in prayer as your redeemed children, united to Christ with the guarantee of the life that you promise us. The resurrection is the proof that there is nothing you cannot do and that there is nothing you will not do for our good. So hear our prayers and act according to your will. Father, continually during this pandemic, we pray for hope. We pray that you would remind us that this world is not our home, but that we await eternal life with you in glory. Fill us with this hope so that we can live during this time faithfully and with confidence in you. And we pray that you would work powerfully to spread your gospel and the hope of eternal life to every nation and call all people to yourself. Please use this time to remind us of our own mortality and the frailty of life so that those who have never cared to think of you would now turn to you in saving faith. Would you please use the Western Church Planning Network to this end? Please give the church planters wisdom to know how to best care for and shepherd your people. Please use these churches to care for the needs of their communities. Please provide them with the financial resources they need and use them to spread the hope of the resurrection. Father, we pray for those being impacted by COVID-19. We pray for those who are sick. We pray especially for Brad and Nancy Colburn. Would you please bring healing to Nancy? Would you please protect Brad as well? Would you surround them uh, by your church? Would you allow us to be a means through which they experience your nearness and comfort and love? Would you bring healing and strength to all those who are sick? We pray for those who have family members and friends who are sick. Please give them your comfort and your peace and great sense of your presence. We pray for those who are caring for the sick, for doctors and nurses and so many others. Please protect them. Provide hospitals with the resources they need to care for their patients. We pray for those who are in positions of authority, whether at hospitals, in cities, or in this country. Please give them wisdom to know how to best lead and respond each day. We pray for those who are unable to work. Please provide for them in their needs. Help us as a church to care for the needs of those around us. Give us wisdom to know the best ways to do this. We look to you, Lord. You alone are God, and you alone can do all things. So do in us and with us and through us all that is according to your will. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Beyond this lifetime, beyond this darkness, there's light. Your cross is shining That we may open our eyes The cross stands above it all Burning bright in this life The cross towers over it all One hope, one deliverer A savior reigning high above it all Above it all are breaking, your love is shaking us free, a great awakening, this world will finally see.
above it all. The cross stands above it all, burning bright in this life. The cross towers over it all. One hope, one deliverer, the Savior reigning high above it all. Above it all. The cross. Please receive this benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And may you abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.